Welcome back church. This is the second of two videos for this morning's service and this is the message video. The difference with this video is instead of seeing my head bobbing around, you'll see the text slides that go with the message so you can read along with me. If you've just joined us, it's Sunday 29th March 2020 and you're joining with Bird Christian Centre in Christchurch, New Zealand and I'm Pastor Nigel Ripley. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name, your holy name. And this morning, we ask you to be with us wherever we are right now. I pray you bless this message. Anoint these words to strengthen and inspire faith and hope. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Last Sunday, I shared that God is with you. Just as he was with Gideon in the book of Judges. Gideon and his nation were facing a massive army that was devouring every aspect of their lives and economy. God saved Gideon's country through that one man, and that's why it's so important to really take to heart the promise that God gave Gideon. He said, God is with you, mighty warrior. These unusual circumstances that we're in currently have a very important and valuable opportunity for us as followers of Christ. God is working all things together for our good, the Bible tells us in Romans 8. So we need to put our faith into action and seek the goodness and activity of God in the midst of these circumstances. He's always weaving a golden thread of kingdom activity through the everyday reality of life our life on earth. Seek him. Seek his activity. Seek and find the good things he has in mind for you in this unusual season. A copy of last week's message is available if you email our church office, but today I want to follow on from that message with something God was showing me back at the beginning of the year regarding 2020. God is calling us to go deeper in him this year, and he wants to do a deeper work in our lives, especially pruning, refining, and delivering us from things like fear. And the current pandemic provides a difficult but very useful opportunity for us to really tune into God's work in us. Fear is sadly the number one thing uniting the world right now. And as a disciple of Jesus Christ, fear has no place in you. We know that God's perfect love drives out fear. So if the fear that is gripping the world is beginning to invade your thoughts and emotions, please do take up the advice and teaching you have received at our church over the last 12 months. It's time for God's people to overcome fear and truly live by faith. Now that doesn't mean that you won't have times that you feel worried about the pandemic in the coming weeks and months. God designed us with emotions and we will feel fear and worry at times. But it's what we do with that fear. We have a choice of what we follow and what we believe and what we clothe our minds with. Use the tools you've been provided and replace fear with faith in God's love and goodness he is with you and working things together for your good. I want to read today from Luke chapter 5. This is one of the early interactions of Jesus with his disciples. At this stage though, the disciples hadn't begun following Jesus, although some had heard him or heard of him, and Simon Peter had previously had Jesus over for dinner. Let's read together in Luke chapter 5. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little farther from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. 
When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Now keep in mind the context. Who we know as disciples of Jesus Christ, the Twelve, weren't disciples at this stage. Jesus was still new to them. Jesus had only recently began his teaching ministry. And Jesus had chosen this moment in time for calling particular men to be his disciples or his students, or more accurately, his apprentices. Simon would later be called Peter. And he was a fisherman. A few years later, in Acts 4, religious leaders described Simon Peter as an unschooled, ordinary man. Simon wasn't a priest. He wasn't a rabbi. He wasn't a politician. He was not an elder or Levite or officer of any rank. He did not come from any lineage of value or esteem. And he was uneducated. Fishing was all Peter knew. So I guess we can at least describe Peter as a professional fisherman. Hopefully he was good at that. But on this occasion, he had been unsuccessful in his only profession and known skills. Jesus borrowed Simon Peter's boat as a preaching platform. And just, it just happened to be on a day when Peter was likely tired, frustrated, feeling like a bit of a failure. His one main job income and skill in life was catching fish for market and here he worked hard all night as a professional fisherman and hadn't caught a thing and it just so happens that this is the time Jesus the rabbi decides to turn up now it appears that Simon Peter has some level of respect for this Jesus character because he agreed to allow Jesus to use his boat for a fre- for a preaching platform so Peter had just finished a night shift. He was washing his nets after a useless night of frustration, probably a bit worried about what the wife will say when he turns up home with no money and no fish for tea. He'd be tired and disappointed. His life didn't seem to add up to much, and today his life wasn't getting any better. And then this Jesus guy says to him, go back out. Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And he says this to Simon after a night shift of cold, hard work, after the disappointment and frustration of not catching anything, after extra hours on the lakeside washing his nets, ready for another night shift on the water, followed by Jesus doing a preaching series to to a live audience. Why, Jesus? Why, of all the days, would you choose today to use my boat and then ask me to go out again after we just finished cleaning up from the last shift? I just want to go home and go to bed. Why choose me? Why choose now? Why would it make any difference to go back out again? Well, at least that's what I would have been thinking if I was Simon Peter. But what does Simon say? Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. I don't think this unschooled, ordinary fisherman really understood the truth and the power of what he just said. Last week, I included the story of Simon Peter in Matthew 14 when he walked on water to Jesus. I said that in my view, Peter wasn't really walking on water. He was walking on the word. In that story, Peter had asked Jesus, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water 
because Jesus said one word, come. And because Jesus said, come, Peter trusted him and believed that what Jesus did, he could do too. It's the word of God that has power to create, just like in Genesis 1, as well as the authority to calm storms, move mountains, heal the sick, raise the dead, and walk on water. The word of God supersedes the natural laws of the material world. It even has authority over plagues. And in the story in Luke 5, when Jesus tells Simon Peter to go out again, far out into the deep, and let down his net for a catch, even though hours before the professional fisherman used all his skills and experience and caught nothing, even so, Simon does what Jesus said. He listened to the word, and he obeyed the word. Now, it doesn't say he had great faith. It didn't say that Simon actually believed that he would catch something. He made sure Jesus understood that he had already spent the night trying to catch fish and they just weren't there. But because you say so, Peter explains, I will let down the nets. Friend, it doesn't matter what doubts you carry or what fears invade your thoughts. It doesn't matter how qualified or unqualified you are. It doesn't matter whether you've had unusual excess or unforgettable failure. It doesn't matter whether you experienced the best year of your life or a worldwide plague. If you will just listen to Jesus and put into action his word to you, that word has power and authority to change everything. Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. These are professional fishermen in professional fishing vessels. And not only is the catch too large for Simon's boat, but two fishing boats together can't cope with the massive catch. This is nothing but a miracle, a sign and a wonder. Were they expecting that? No, no way. Listen to Simon's reaction. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinner, a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Before this event, Simon may have been impressed with this rabbi's teaching. Maybe he saw Jesus do some miracles, but Simon had no idea who this rabbi really was. Now his whole reality comes to light. Simon feels the need to confess that he is a sinner. He is ashamed to be in the presence of this great man, Jesus. When this Jesus speaks, he's not just passing on information. He is speaking the holy voice of God. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Now this unschooled, ordinary man, this fisherman, is being called by the master rabbi, the voice of God, the superpower of heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, is promising to turn this nobody fisherman into a man who would seek out people to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Simon goes on to make history and his life and legacy is still impacting our lives today 2,000 years on. One word from Jesus, if you receive it and put it into action, can change your life forever. The goodness that God had in mind for Simon Peter was infinitely more than Simon could ever imagine. All those years fishing, all the skills and experience, all the tools and equipment, none of it could contain the power and bounty of what God had in mind for Simon. And from that day on, 
Simon Peter's life completely changed. Instead of catching fish, Simon would walk on water. He would heal the sick. He would see supernatural visions, preach the word of God and lead the church. One word from Jesus, one simple instruction can change everything. Here's what I want you to take away from this story for the year ahead that you're facing. For Simon Peter, what was an ordinary, difficult, frustrating, normal day became the day. It was a new day with a new way for a new thing. I believe this is for our church. It is a new day with a new way for a new thing. And for the last few years, you've heard me repeat this promise over and over again in Isaiah 43. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Isn't that what Simon Peter was experiencing? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on them. He left everything to follow Jesus. See, I'm doing a new thing. Do you think? Simon and his buddies had never seen anything like this. It was completely new. And I am making a way. And so he had. Jesus called Simon to follow him and trust him to reform him into someone who would change history. Church, right now, our nation and our world is facing a new day. There's been announced this week a new way. And it's a new thing that nobody wants. But for you, God is doing something good. But it involves a new way. Isn't it interesting how the level four lockdown is forcing us to rethink how we live, what's important, and how time gets used? The challenge and the opportunity before you is to follow the world in fear, panic and confusion or to tune into what God is saying to you. Everything changed for Simon Peter when he listened to what Jesus said and obeyed. God is doing a new thing and it's a promise for something wonderful, something amazing, something that previously seemed impossible. But that new thing requires a new way. The next few months will be very different for all of us. But it's time for you and I to arise in faith and take hold of the identity you have been given in God. You can sink into the troubled waters of fear and worry, or you can tune into God, seek His voice in His Word, and put it into action. Don't follow the pattern of the world around you. God's calling you to be light to the world, to bring hope to the despairing, to set captives free and bring good news to the poor, just as it says in Luke chapter 4, 18 to 10. It's a new day with a new way for a new thing. God is raising you up to bring Luke 4 into effect in the world in a way we've never seen before. Right now, the world needs you to bring the anointing of God and his good news. And always remember this. The current circumstances don't limit our mission. They amplify our mission. Next Sunday, we're going to carry on reading through Luke 5 to see what else God is saying to us at this time. But I want you to take this word today and consider what your focus is going to be for the weeks and months ahead. Will you join the world in worrying, fearing, panicking? Or will you take the time to seek God in his word, hear his voice and obey? Because if you do that, you will find God has a new way that brings about a new thing. All the miracles, provisions and transformation you read of in the Bible are available for you and I in the days ahead. But the way you did things in the past won't work. It's time to reset our lives, seek God, find his voice and follow the new way he has for us. This is it, folks. It's time to walk on water, not sink into it. 
please would you join me now in praying this prayer together. Heavenly Father, today we declare that you are good and nothing can change who you are. You have good plans for us. You are taking us from glory to glory. You are preparing an army of anointed servants who will bring good news to a world surrounded by bad news. You are calling each person in your church to be the sons and daughters of the kingdom that you created us to be. Thank you that we have access to the kingdom of heaven because right now this world needs what you've got. Father, I pray that faith would arise in our church like never before. I ask that you stir us to prayer and to seeking you in your word. May the weeks ahead be a time of going deeper in you. Help me to make time to seek you, to hear you, and to know you. Thank you that you have a plan in the midst of this disaster. I trust you. I look forward to the good things you're doing at this time. Lead me, King Jesus. I will listen and obey. Amen. Please do, church, keep in contact via email, Facebook, phone, and any way that you can. If you have any needs or concerns, contact one of us. If you'd like more help in dealing with fear and anxiety, please contact myself or Pastor Mana. But really seriously take this opportunity over the coming weeks and months to quiet life down, seek God in his word, and follow him. He is leading you in a way you haven't been before, but it's good and only good. Trust him. You unravel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears have the cold
I'm no longer 